Radio Gold. Nero Wolf made his larger-than-life radio show debut on July 5, 1943. This intelligent detective show, based on the Rex Stout novels, proved to be a natural for classic radio. Throughout the show's run, Santos Otega, Louis Van Ruten, Francis X. Bushman, and Sidney Greenstreet all filled the voluminous chair of Nero Wolf. As well, a large assortment of actors played the part of every blonde's hero, Archie Goodwin. The Adventures of Nero Wolf's show remained popular on the airwaves in different versions for eight years, from 1943 to 1951. Stay tuned for Nero Wolf, transcribed in 30 seconds. The chimes are all set to wish you a happy new year this Sunday with a gala broadcast of The Big Show. The unpredictable Tallulah will MC with a host of leading stars of stage, screen, and radio, including Ken Murray, Gloria Swanson, Margaret O'Brien, Jose Ferrer, and many more. And there's a carnival of fun with Theater Guild on the air also this Sunday when the sparkling Lockhart family, Jean, Kathleen, and daughter June, co-star with Van Heflin in Theater Guild's presentation of the exciting story, State Fair. Ladies and gentlemen, the ringing of that phone bell means mystery, adventure. Nero Wolf's office, Archie Goodwin speaking. Who? Oh, I see. Oh, and you think Mr. Wolf might be interested in going over and... Hold on a minute. Archie, I'm not interested in going anywhere. Ill-considered movement is the curse of our times. Not to mention the mania for fresh air. Phew. Bottle opener, if you please. Here you are. But that was Zabro's flower shop, Mr. Wolf. Indeed. Got a new shipment of orchids from upstate. In that case... Mr. Wolf, remember the curse of our times, not to mention the mania of... I'll be there. <laughs> He'll be there. After all, a man must risk his life sometimes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the bulkiest, balkiest, smartest, and most unpredictable detective in the world. That chairborn genius, Nero Wolf, created by Rex Stout and brought to you in a new series of adventures over this NBC network in the person of Mr. Sidney Greenstreet. Orchids don't grow up overnight. They have to be carefully planted, tended, watered, and watched. And the same thing goes for murder. Take Zabro's flower shop minutes after we got that phone call. Zabro! Uh, oh, Mr. Hansen, I did not notice you are here. I'm here, and what's more... You, you like the, the way I display your orchids, hmm? I don't like the way you've been avoiding meeting your obligations. Please, please, it is better not to shout. It'd be still better if you paid me what you owe me. Mr. Hansen, uh, business has not been so good. I will pay. You'd better. I, I intend to... My lawyers aren't going to be satisfied by intentions. You... Your lawyers? I've no particular desire to own a flower shop, but it looks as if I'm going to, unless you raise some money. <laughs> Mr. Hansen, I have worked years. I have given of my blood to make a success of this establishment. You cannot take him from me. You are a rich man. You... I intend to stay rich, too. You've got 24 hours, Abro. A man can accomplish a lot in 24 hours. Yes, Mr. Hansen. Even maybe murder. <laughs> Mr. Zabro? Hmm? Oh, good afternoon, Miss Hansen. Is Uncle here? Yes, he is here. At the display, towards the back of the store. Oh, thanks. How is he? Oh, I, I mean, he, he is the way he always is. Hard, vindictive. Mr. Zabro. I am sorry. Excuse me now. Hmm. Uncle? What is it, Enid? I, um... Have you seen my display? The lilies? Uh-huh. Yes. 
pretty. Oh, thank you. Uh, it... He's not here. Well, I didn't say... You didn't have to. John Arndt is not here. Why he is not here, I don't know. His job was to look after my display. Perhaps he doesn't need a job anymore. You know he does. Fiddlesticks. After all, if he marries my heiress... Uncle! My dear girl, John Arndt is a fairly capable man with orchids. Outside of that, I have no use for him whatsoever. Especially in the role of your husband. Well, isn't that for me to decide? Of course it is. Except that, pretty as you are, John Arndt is seeing you through a golden haze. To be precise, the money that will come to you from me when I die. That's nasty. It's the truth. Oh, you can't know that. <laughs> I'm going to find out. What? I saw my lawyers this morning. Among other things, I instructed them to draw up a codicil to my will. A codicil to the effect that all my money goes to you on one condition. Oh, you couldn't. I did. The condition was that you refrain from marrying John Arndt, either now or at any time in the future. Well, that's not fair. It's a very good way of discouraging Mr. Arndt. What'll you bet his ardor cools off quickly, hmm? You, you told him? Yes. Probably why he hasn't appeared as yet. He's sulky. You really sign that, that codicil? I will, as soon as the papers are drawn up. Where are you going? I don't know. I've got to get away someplace and think. Very well. Think about forgetting John Arndt. Best thing in the world for you. Uncle, do you really think you can manage other people's lives for them? I don't see why not. No? Well, people don't like to be managed. They get desperate sometimes. And sometimes they kill. <laughs> Mr. Wolf, what are you doing? Getting up. I'm a... Well, that makes you eligible for the Explorers Club or something. Ah, my coat and muffler, Archie. I got them here. Thank you. You're really going out into that, that weather outside? Archie, must you try to be witty? It amuses me no end. Haven't you seen enough of those weeds yet? An orchid is not a wee. Another muffler, Archie, the woolen one. You've already got two on. Please, fresh air clogs the lungs, Archie. <laughs> sure, everybody knows that, but they won't admit it. Of course not. The conspiracy of silence. Archie, I'm ready. You sure? I can see a square inch of skin showing. Tom, you're driving me to Zabra. Mm hmm. All right, careful. And take a deep breath. I'm going to open the door. You ready? Yeah, very well. Open it. Be brave, Mr. Wolf. We'll keep the car window shut, and maybe you'll make it. Mm. Uh, Careful. The risks one takes. Uh. In you go. Uh. Uh. Oh. Mm. Uh. Well. Okay, boss. Now, where is Zabro's? 45th Street. Gee, ten blocks. Grit your teeth, Mr. Wolf. We're off. Oh, Mr. Wolf, I'm glad you are here. Those orchids you wrote me about had better be worth a trip. The trip? But I think you live only a little way from here. Don't forget it had to be made in the open air, Mr. Zabro. Where are the orchids? Uh, towards the back. They are from Hansen's place. He is a fine grower. I have made an exhibit. Good. Oh, excuse me. Oh, uh, others are here. You go look for yourself, no? Very well. Archie. Hmm? Oh, uh, I, I was just noticing the... Uh, the uh, did a girl just enter the store? A girl, a goddess. Tall, graceful... Venus de Milo with arms. Arms that were made... Never mind. Let's go look at orchids. Thank you. Mmm. Very fine. The exhibit is laid out like nature, huh? Reminds me of a spot in Central Park that I spent some of my happiest moments in. Then you do like flowers. I don't go to Central Park to look at flowers. I went there to, uh, Forget it. Gladly. Now go away and annoy someone else. Venus? I want to concentrate on these orchids. Goodbye. Okay. I'll leave you alone with your loved ones. Let's see. Maybe I can arrange to be left alone with something I could very easily learn to love. Hey, boss. 
Don't bother me, Haji. Oh, this is serious. There's a lily display just like this one over at the other end of the store. Nothing connected with lilies could possibly be serious. Maybe not, but there's a corpse planted among these lilies. Indeed? A lot of ferns were banked up in back of the display. I saw a foot sticking out, so I slipped back, lifted a few ferns, and found a body. Fresh? Very. The wound was still bleeding. Knife wound. Sad, very. Now run along. Well, aren't you going to do anything about it? Why should I? Anyone who would permit himself to be found dead or alive among a display of lilies is beneath contempt. Well, maybe the poor guy didn't have a chance to crawl into an orchid display before he died. However, if that's the way you feel, I'll tell the police all about poor Mr. Hansen and let them... Who? Hansen, the orchid grower. He's one of the finest in the country. Not is. Was. Wasn't me who pushed him under the lilies. Under lilies? Bah. He would have hated that. Have you told Zabro? No. No, Zabro's been busy up front. Uh, Where is this display? Ah, right along here. There's been a number of people in the store since we came. Someone else may have noticed that dead man's foot. Uh Uh-uh. I covered it. Satisfactory. At times, you give the illusions of intelligence. Is this the display? Yep. Come around to the back. There's a little space between the back of the display and the wall. Uh, Oh. oh. (laughs) Now, here, right under this pile of ferns... Of ferns? Yes, Sergeant? Hey, that body. What about it? It got bashful. It's gone. Indeed. The corpse was dead. Corpse is off now. Confound you, Archie. Have you been drinking too much milk again? Now, look, boss. I saw him there. The blood's still coming out of his back. And I tell you that... Let me understand you. Are you suggesting the corpse rose and walked away? No, but somebody could have dragged it away. Somebody who put it here in the first place. Pictures, no doubt. Come along, Archie. If this is some half-witted trick to distract me from the orchid... Oh, no, sir. no. I never come between a man and his love. It... Hey, wait a minute, Mr. Wolf. Yes? Do ferns bleed? Oh, let me see. Oh. Indeed. Yes, there is blood. Fresh arterial blood on these ferns. Bright red color. Which means there was a wounded person among these lilies recently. Thanks for the late vote of confidence. Hmm. Whoever killed Hanson apparently found a better place for him. Mm -hmm. Took him home to put him over the mantelpiece. Unlikely Hanson wasn't very decorative. Okay. Now she'll for the police. You have nothing to show them except a fern leaf covered with blood? No. Don't tell me you smell a fee among all these flowers. Hanson was a man I admired. Good heavens, Archie. The number of first-rate orchid growers is small enough without one of us being murdered. Mm Mm-hmm. Unsportsmanlike, huh? Okay, we won't stand for it. What next? The body was removed from the building. How? Well, I wouldn't swear to it, but there's a window here that leads out to an alleyway. Could the alleyway be seen from the street? I don't think so. There's a bend in it. Wide enough for a car? Yep. Bring Zabu to me. Oh, don't bother. He's coming himself. Well, Mr. Wolf, what do you think of the... Mr. Wolf, I do not believe this. What don't you believe? You are looking at lilies. Not exactly. Whose flowers are these? Uh, Mr. Hansen's niece grows lilies. I see. Sabro, did you get all your orchids from Hansen? Oh, yes, yes. He is an artist. Practically an old master at the moment. How much money do you owe him? Who, Who tell you I owe him? I. You do, don't you? Well, yes. Business has not been so good. But did he speak to you? No, I guess you owed him money. But I do not understand. Was Hanson in the store today? Yes, yes, he came. You hear us quarrel, eh? Where is he now? Oh, I do not know. He he leave, maybe. I rather think he did. Zabra, who else was in the store within the last half hour who might have known Hanson? Oh, Miss Hansen was here, and uh, uh, John Arndt. He is Mr. Hansen's assistant, and how you say, uh, sweet on uh, Miss Hansen. Was she the tall girl came in shortly after we did, Mr. Zabro? Tall? Yes, yes, I think so. Are either of them still here? No, 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 they go. Together? Uh, Miss Hansen go first. Very well. Come along, Archie. Okay, Mr. Wolf. Uh, you will not tell Mr. Hansen you know... You know of my debts. Uh, no, Mr. Zabro, I won't tell him. As a matter of fact, even if I wanted to, I don't think he would listen. Now, 
I love these long drives in the country. Where are we going? Hanson's place. Oh. You think he returned to it to haunt it, huh? He's returned there, I suspect. Uh-huh. In order to cast suspicion on himself. Miss Hanson lives with him. Mr. Arndt works for him on the premises, therefore... Miss Hanson will be there? I imagine so. Why? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Boss, can we stop at the next town? Why? I want to buy a book on lilies. This sudden... In... <laughs> you mean Miss Hanson grows them in there? Uh-huh. You see, that way we'll have something in common. Perhaps, but Archie... Is an interest in flowers what you want to have in common with her? (laughs) (laughs) So this is the house that Orchid's built, huh? Snazzy. Very handsome country home. The streamlined zombies. Hello. I take that back. Miss Hanson? Yes. I'm near a wolf. The person ogling you is my assistant, Mr. Goodwin. Oh. Well, Uncle's spoken of you, Mr. Wolf. Oh, come in, please. Thank you. I was not ogling. I was merely tracing a resemblance. Oh, between Uncle and me? Between you and my heart's desire. Archie, stop being poetic. It doesn't become you. In here, please. My uncle isn't at home yet, but... Oh, John, this is Mr. Wolf, Mr. Goodwin. John is Uncle's assistant. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Hanson hasn't returned from town yet, Mr. Wolf. Are you quite sure? Why, yes. Unless Enid saw him. No, no, I didn't, John. Indeed. In that case, if you don't mind, we'll wait for him. Well, of course. We'd be delighted. Sure. Uh, Excuse me, won't you? I've got some work to do. On orchids or uh, lilies? The orchids. Well, then go right ahead. See you later. Oh, well, can I get you something to drink? Beer will do. Thank you. I'd better help you bring the bottle in, Miss... uh... Archie. On the other hand, maybe you can manage your loan. Well, of course I can. I'm a big girl, Mr. Goodwin. I noticed. I mean, uh, uh, why not uh, Why not call me Archie? It takes less time. Mm, I'd like to, Archie. Swell. Remember what old Dr. Tidmouse said? I want a bottle of beer. Said I want a bottle... Oh. oh. <laughs> no. Never mind, Enid. You better uh, go gather some beer for Mr. Wolf. All right. I'll be back in a minute. Mmm, so much of her and all so nice. Archie, are you I... forgetting why we are here? I don't care why you're here. Me, we I We are have... waiting for Uncle. Uh-huh. Mr. Wolf, it's unlikely that Uncle is going to walk in through that front door. True. That is why you're sneaking out the back door to find him. How do you know he'll be around here? This is where he lives, isn't it, Archie? Yes, but if you'll remember, Uncle gave up living earlier this afternoon. You mean he was persuaded to? Nevertheless, I rather think he'll be around, body and all. He wasn't in the house, so I tried the conservatory, hothouse, what have you. It was hot in that steam-heated orchid paradise. Also, it was full of orchids. Unfortunately, it wasn't full of Miss Hanson. I wandered hither and yon for a moment, dreaming of her, until I noticed a foot... Same foot I'd seen back at Zabro's, and peculiarly enough, the same corpse was attached to it. Uncle's. I was bending over to take a closer look when I felt a thud. I realized that thud was the sound of something hitting my head, and I began to realize, too, that I'd been knocked almost unconscious, which the second blow did. understand where my uncle is, Mr. Wolf. He's staying away so late is unusual, then. Of course it is. Which reminds me, Archie's been gone for several hours. Yeah, where did he go, Mr. Wolf? You look about. Were you in the hothouse, Mr. Hunt? No, I was packing some plants. You, Miss Hanson? Well, after I brought your beer, I went upstairs and rested for a while. Why? Because if either of you harmed Archie, I shall personally murder you. Oh, Mr. Wolf. Uh. Come on, we've got to find the boy. Why should either of us want to harm him? Because he probably found your uncle's body. His body? Huh? What are you... I don't understand. Mr. Hanson has been murdered. Oh, oh no. Enid, Enid. Oh, stop there, Miss Hanson. You're a perfectly healthy young woman. There's no reason for you to swoon. Now, look here, you. Besides, I rather suspect she lost no love for him. 
Am I right, Miss Hanson? He, he was my uncle. Are you aware of the fact? He opposed your marriage to Miss Aunt here. That's none of your business. Which means he did oppose it. Mr. Aunt, Mr. Hanson was a friend of mine. I intend to find the murderer after I find his body. It shows a lack of proper respect to transport a corpse about the countryside. Come, both of you, we must find Archie. This whole thing's like a nightmare. If you can't wake up from it, let's go on with the search. <gasps> oh, look, there on the ground. Archie. I'll, I'll see if he's all right. Why, this is fantastic. Mr. Hanson stabbed to death, and now Goodwin. He's oh. just been stunned, thank heavens. He's, oh. he's coming to Oh, I died. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm dead. Archie, Archie, speak to me. Oh, I went to heaven. Are you all right, Archie? Uh-oh, the other place. Ah, uh, get up. Sure, if somebody will hold my head. Oh, Are we having an earthquake? You poor boy, take my arm here. Mm, I'll take both. Boy, he's normal. What happened, Archie? Somebody hit me when I wasn't looking. Yeah? Why? I don't know. Oh, yes, I remember. Yes? I found Uncle lying right there. Right there. The poor boy's delirious. Don't tell me he's gone again. I'm afraid he has, Archie. Are you sure you saw him? I'm positive, and then somebody slugged me. That corpse is the shyest one I've ever met. Blood would have dried. There'll be no signs of his having been placed here. Bad. Why? Your testimony would be valueless, especially since you were found unconscious. The jury would suspect you of having hit the bottle. <laughs> Why didn't we stay the night? I'm a sick man. Enid would have nursed me. Ah, you're not sick. And I won't have you taking advantage of that girl. In my condition, I couldn't have. But maybe she would have taken advantage of me. Oui. Is that what they call it in your day? The Zabro. Stop the car. Okay. Here we go. No, I can manage. Don't. I'm not entirely helpless. Yeah. Place is closed. Dark. I was afraid it might be. Don't tell me Zabro's gone traveling, too. Possibility, Archie. You mean he killed Hanson to cancel the dead he owed him and then followed us out to the country house and dumped Hanson there, hoping to, to pin suspicion on Eden and John? Perhaps. Uh-huh. Slugged me when I found the body too soon, and then... Uh-huh. Guess we'd better get into the joint. George Luck? Um... Uh... A guy I know got out of jail the other day. Yeah? Uh, he's reformed, so he gave me all his skeleton keys. You have them with you? Mm-hmm. And we'll find out in a minute just how good a burglar he was. Mm, very good. Will you come in? Shut the door. Okay. Now. Uh, what's that? Somebody's been hurt. The lights. Nothing up front here. Shh. Back of the store, where the exhibits are. I'll go see. Maybe you better stay here. Nonsense. Oh, where? Uh oh, among the lilies again. But this time there are two bodies there. Sabro, quick, Archie. Mister Sabro, Mister Zap, he's been shot, boss. Bad. I, I, he's trying to say something. He, the lilies, Mister Mister Hans. Yes, yes, we know about him. Who shot you? From the window, alleyway, came in. Zabro, who? He inherit money. Inherit. Down, Mr. Wolf, quick. Somebody shooting from that window. Archie. All in one piece. Are you all right? Yes, that car. It's gone. Brought the body here and. Zabro. He couldn't duck. He's dead. Yes. Police, boss, this time we've got more than a fern leaf smeared with blood to show them. Not yet, Archie. I'd prefer handing the murderer over to them along with the victims. I'm going home. Archie, get Miss Hanson and Mr. Arndt there as soon as you can. Well, suppose they don't want to come. Knock them unconscious and drag them there. Not Enid, boss. Enid's... Hey, 
What Zabro said about inheriting. Don't anticipate, Archie. When you get them to my office, we'll identify the murderer then. Mr. Wolf, don't you think this is all a little high-handed, dragging us here in the middle of the night? Murder is even more high-handed, Mr. Arndt. Please, John. Miss Hanson, do you inherit? Well, well, I guess so. I'm I'm Uncle's only relative, so I suppose... Wait a minute, Enid. Mr. Wolf, are you suggesting that she had anything to do with this invisible corpse? The corpse is no longer invisible, Mr. Arndt. You... Oh, you've seen Uncle? Yes, dead, in Zabra's establishment. Lying with a knife in his back, in his own orchid display. Oh. Now you're trying to pin something on me. You know I set up that orchid display. Indeed. The police will be interested in that information. But he wasn't found in the orchids. He was... Yes, Mr. Arn. He was found where? I, I don't know. You were about to say the lily display, weren't you? I wasn't going to say anything. You're a little late. You already informed us that you knew his body was not placed in the orchid display. How did you know? I... I, I, I just guessed... Jury will be very much impressed by your remarkable clairvoyance, especially since uh... Archie asked Mister Zabro to come in. Mister Zabro, okay. Don't bother, Goodwin. John, that gun. Shut up, you little fool. Enid's a big girl. I don't know how you tumbled, Wolf. Lucky guessing, maybe. Oh, come now. Neither of us has indulged in guesswork. You killed Hanson, placed his body in the lily display to attract suspicion towards Miss Hanson. You felt sure she wouldn't be convicted, so you were safe. She would inherit, you would marry her, a marriage which your uncle opposed. When you saw that Archie had discovered the body too early for you to establish an alibi for yourself... Then he sneaked the body out of the window into his car and then dumped it in the hothouse. For time. Go on, Mr. Wolf. He didn't intend it to be discovered there, which was why he knocked you unconscious, Archie. Oh, I'm so glad he had a good reason for it. He had a body on his hands. He decided to double back, put the body in its original place, and carry through his plan. But Zabro caught him at it, poor fellow. I thought Zabro was in the other room. Lost you, you fool. You think I, too, am addicted to carrying corpses about? Zabro is dead. And you've given yourself away unnecessarily. Archie? All right. Archie, quick. Let, quick. Let, let go, Edith. I've got his arm. I'll give him mine with a fist attached. Very satisfactory, Archie. Now call the police. Inform them you have two corpses and a murderer for them. You should have heard Mr. Arndt's language, boss, when the police took him away. Oh, I don't think he loves you. I don't think it matters anymore. It used to, to me. Growing pains. You'll get over it, Miss Hanson. Uh, you trapped him, Mr. Wolf, but... What made you so sure he did it? At the hothouse, when you were unconscious, Archie, Mr. Arndt deplored the fact that Mr. Hanson had been stabbed in the back. And no one had mentioned how he was killed. Therefore... The reason Arndt knew was because he himself had killed Mr. Hanson. Hmm. Murderers seldom get away with it, no matter how tightly they button their lips. Hmm. Well, mine, however, are not buttoned up. Archie? Oh, the beer is on your desk. Thank you. Miss Hanson, stop brooding. Try some of this beer. But, Mr. Wolf, my, my heart's broken. As a man who has lived a good many years, Miss Hanson, permit me to assure you that the easiest way of mending a broken heart is by filling the stomach. <laughs> ah. have been listening to The New Adventures of Nero Wolf, starring Sidney Greenstreet. Tonight's transcribed story was based on the characters created by Rex Stout. This is an Edwin Fadiman program produced and directed by J. Donald Wilson. In the cast were Larry Dobkin as Archie Goodwin and G.G. Pearson, J. Novello, Herb Butterfield, and Byron Kane. Next week at this same time, Nero Wolfe and Archie will bring you The Case of the Deadly Sellout. Don Stanley speaking.
Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Friday means another visit with that entertaining eating establishment, Duffy's Tavern. The best of X-1 from Radio Gold. X-1 has been described as one of the finest offerings of American radio drama and one of the best science fiction series in any medium of all time. Subscribe now to be notified when new shows drop. Radio Gold is a three-nines-fine radio production. See you next time.